Hi, I'm Dr. Raymond Douglas, and I'm an orbit and ocular plastic specialist here in Beverly Hills, California. And today I'm joined by Dr. Pejman Cohan, who's an endocrinologist here in Beverly Hills and takes care of many patients with Graves' disease. And it's, it's my pleasure for him to share some of this information today. In a previous segment with Dr. Cohen, we talked a lot about medications for treating the thyroid component in Graves' disease or the endocrinologic manifestations. Now I'd like to talk a little bit more about the other options of the treating the thyroid in Graves' disease. Absolutely. The mainstay of treatment in, in my uh, sort of approach to patients with Graves' disease is medications, but there are certain instances where radioactive iodine or surgery uh, are you know, pretty important options to consider. Um, so radioactive iodine uses the principle that, that iodine is a nutrient that is used by the thyroid gland to make thyroid hormone. And so in radioiodine therapy, that an iodine molecule is made radioactive and that uh, is then swallowed or, or um, you know, by the patient, taken in by the patient orally. Mm -hmm. And that radiation is directed to the thyroid because the thyroid traps the iodine. And that iodine that is radioactive will gradually kill off the thyroid. <laughs> that, I mean, that's the best term that I can use. It will mm -hmm. gradually bring the thyroid down from an overactive phase to, to normal, but oftentimes it actually renders the thyroid underactive. And if patients are followed long enough, the majority of them will progress to an underactive thyroid after radioactive iodine treatment. So it is, a, it is an effective treatment. Um, the benefit of it is that it's a one-time treatment. Mm -hmm. And so they, the patient does not have to uh, take a medication on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. But of course, if the radioiodine then causes the thyroid to become underactive, then that person will need to be on thyroid hormone replacement uh, for the rest of their life. And we'll talk a little bit more about thyroid hormone replacement, but certainly radioactive iodine has been shown to be a wonderful, very good treatment for the thyroid and controlling uh, hyperactive thyroid function. The potential downside is for some patients who have eye issues associated with Graves' disease or thyroid eye disease where their eyes swell and bulge out, and we've interacted on several of these patients. And there is, you know, as the disease, the eye disease is worse, there is a bigger risk for radioactive eye, iodine making that the eye symptoms worse. Often we can reverse these or prevent them by giving steroids at the time of induction of the radioactive iodine, but it is at least a consideration for some patients, especially for moderate to severe patients, um, patients with moderate to severe eye disease, that can often be a problem. Um, it is some, there are often questions whether this is the same as radiation. It's not radiation that has been used in the past for treating the eye issues, where you're actually undergoing many treatments of radiation, external beam radiation to decrease the swelling of the eyes. But this is radiation from radioactive iodine, which I think is an important distinction that often gets lost uh, in the discussion. What If radioactive iodine is inappropriate for patients after discussion with their endocrinologist such as yourself, what other options may be available for them? The final treatment option that we sometimes have to resort to is surgery. And um, you know, surgery, of course, is a definitive procedure that will take away the overactivity of the thyroid. It will take it away you know, on that day of surgery. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, of course, if the person is, is, is hyperthyroid, we want to make sure that surgery is safe for them, and sometimes they do need yeah. to be given some medications and perhaps some heart medications to make sure that the heart can withstand the rigors of a uh, surgery under anesthesia. But in the hands of an experienced thyroid surgeon, surgery can be a very safe and, and um, a very you know, good way to very rapidly uh, restore normal thyroid levels. Uh, just to go back, you know, antithyroid medications uh, generally take four to six weeks to begin to exert their effect, um, and radioactive iodine may take a couple of months to exert its effect. And so in those instances where you want a more rapid normalization of thyroid hormone levels, and for example, maybe that patient like you mentioned 
has moderate or severe thyroid eye disease, then that patient may be a candidate for surgery. Yeah, and these are the type of discussions that I have with patients when they come with more severe eye symptoms and eye problems, really trying to include both the endocrinologist, potentially a thyroid surgeon in that discussion. The group discussion is the most important to have. Uh, you, you mentioned for patients taking lifelong replacement therapy or Synthroid or levothyroxine. Um, many patients have complained to me that no matter what, how their thyroid was treated, they have very hazy thought process or cloudy thinking ever since the, the time their Graves' disease happened. Um, and we had an earlier discussion where you were telling me how you treat some of your patients to help overcome this. And I think this is incredibly valuable information for for our patients. Absolutely. I mean, I think that we're blessed. I'm blessed to have great oculoplastic surgeons like yourself and great thyroid surgeons. So I'm very confident that, you know, whatever treatment that we do, specifically radioactive iodine or thyroid surgery, is going to have a good outcome in that regard. But then the aftermath of that is that that person usually becomes hypothyroid and that person now needs to go on thyroid hormone replacement and thyroid hormone is such a vital hormone for almost every bodily function that that you know we we have and you know we it is sometimes hard to replace that with just taking one pill every day now the standard replacement for somebody whose thyroid is underactive either from radioactive iodine or from a thyroid surgery is to give them the the thyroid hormone called T4 or levothyroxine. And there are many different brands like Synthroid or Levoxyl or Unithroid, um, uh, Tyrosint. These are all uh, T4 uh, products. And the reason we generally start with a T4 product is that 80% of the output of the thyroid gland is T4. And the body then can convert the T4 uh, into another hormone called T3. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes when we just give levothyroxine or T4, whatever brand that we choose, then that does not lead to complete normalization of the patient's symptoms, like you alluded to, like feeling tired, not just physically, but sometimes mentally and cognitively, and patients refer to this as brain fog. Mm -hmm. You know, they feel like they can't focus as well, concentrate as well, and we, you know, I, I say we. Then I sometimes I sometimes try to get a little bit more creative by adding the second thyroid hormone. Mm -hmm. This is not universally accepted by all endocrinologists, uh, but but certainly in my experience, I've seen that those patients who have adequate thyroid levels on paper on a levothyroxine product may benefit from adding T3 to that the other hormone, and. And although it becomes then even less conventional, there are a small subset of patients who actually do best on thyroid extracts, which are you know, thyroid hormone that are derived from animals, most often from pigs. And these, this is an extract of the thyroid gland from these animals that is made into a pill, and uh, the patient takes it once or twice a day. And so I think that um, you know, I'm open to trying these other modalities in those patients who are struggling with the symptoms of hypothyroidism, uh, despite the fact that their blood tests may look completely normal. Yeah, and I think that's really the take home message is that many times patients will present with their blood tests that are very much in a normal range, but the normal range is very large. And I think what you've highlighted is a customized approach to working with someone and how they feel and how their lab tests look, you know, on paper, but working with the, with that combination of symptoms, proper laboratory testing, and trying to come up with a unique solution for patients. Thank you so much, Dr. Cohen. Thank you.